The last time you saw us, we were exploring Nashville, Tennessee. Now we're continuing west with our final destination being Branson, Missouri. We'll be traveling through three states and learning a little about each one as we travel. This will take us two days. We'll also talk about the rules for safe travel and show you the variety of rules you can adopt to fit your style. Finally, we'll let you know what we do. Kentucky, the bluegrass state, is known for horse racing, quilts, and distilling. Daniel Boone blazed a trail through the Cumberland Gap, which allowed many to head west. This led the way for Kentucky to be the first state west of the Appalachian Mountains. It also has the longest cave system in the world and is the birthplace of Mother's Day. Aww. Illinois, the prairie state, is the top producer of soybeans. In fact, almost 80% of the state is farmland. But when people think of Illinois, they think of Chicago. That's probably why some fellow RVers introduced themselves as being from Illinois and then added, not Chicago. The 16th U.S. president spent his formative years here, and it's the birthplace of McDonald's and Twinkies. Missouri, the Show Me State, has more than 6,000 known caves. It played a significant role starting the Pony Express and is home to the world's tallest arch, symbolizing a gateway to Western expansion. Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, Mark Twain's famous characters in his books, lived here as well as Twain himself. If you enjoy iced tea and ice cream cones, you have Missouri to thank for that.
had originally chose a Harvest House location as our stopover, but decided instead to go a little out of our way to check out a Missouri State Park. We made our reservation online, went to the park, and found our spot. It was that simple. They knew we were coming and indicated on our spot that it was reserved. If we hadn't already had reservations in Branson, we would have stayed a little longer. The park was practically empty and very serene. Sam A. Baker State Park is located in the Ozark Mountains. There are actually four regions and it extends into the northern part of Arkansas. We'll be traveling across three of these regions. A few months ago, we embarked on what we thought would be a 7,000 mile trip to chase 70 degrees. When planning, we knew it would be different than anything we had ever done. Although we had planned a cross-country trip in a camper before, the most time we were away was three weeks. This trip would take several months and be packed with far more things to do. I was much more aware of safety on the road and invested in a few things that would help us be as safe as possible, but I knew the thing that would help us the most was not to overplan a travel day. I didn't want to underestimate what goes into traveling a day in an RV. Here are a few rules that RVers consider when planning a travel day. Some adhere to the 222 rule. This rule says that you can plan no more than 200 miles a day, arrive by 2 p.m., and stay two nights. Another common rule is the 333 rule. This stands for 300 miles per day, arrive by 3 p.m., and stay three nights. Some people, particularly young working folks with limited vacation time, travel with the ASAP rule, arrive as soon as possible. They drive straight through stopping with periodic breaks, possibly with multiple drivers. The fun begins at the destination. For us, well, the driving is part of the experience. We're not fond of traffic and wind, but we love our drives. It wasn't always this way, but we're adopting a new state of mind. We've also become much more aware that bad things happen when we're tired and impatient. We were keenly aware that the time of arrival on our GPS would need to be adjusted for our slower speed. Getting from place to place is much more taxing than driving your car to the next destination. Although braking camp for our rig isn't too complicated compared to others, it does take time and attention to make sure everything is checked and secure. We adopted the rule of no more than 300 miles a day. Many of our days were far less than that and involved planned stops along the way. We also made sure we had adequate time to set up camp when we arrived, never driving or arriving in the dark. We were usually there between 2 to 4 o'clock. This gave us plenty of time to settle in and be refreshed for the next day. How long we stayed depended on the things we wanted to see. Some stops were only three nights, but most were five. This gave us enough time to see a lot. Seven nights would have given us more time to rest, but we weren't traveling full time and home was calling. In fact, we'll be having that conversation when we get home. How long will we travel the next time we go out on a long trip like this before having a break? Join us next time as we visit the very patriotic town of Branson. I do. We stopped you to warn you. About what? Yankees! Yankees! Yep, up there around the bay and we got nine of them. Nine of the biggest old Yankees you're ever going to see. They got these wooden war clubs. They're Why did Winnie the Pooh run away from the Indians? He heard that they were from the Kickapoo tribe.